Afternoon everyone, so today we're at a Ford. It's a Ford Focus. One litre EcoBoost. And I wonder what's going to be wrong with this one. So the customer's complaint with this uh, engine, the 1.0 EcoBoost, was an intermittent oil light. So we scanned it for codes, and you can see we've got a P0012, A camshaft position timing over retarded, and a P0014 camshaft position over advanced. So anybody that knows a thing or two about these engines is if you've got an oil light and codes like this, you'll have a, a blocked pickup strainer in the sump, which is caused by the timing belt fragmenting and causing particles to go into the sump. So let me see what else we've got here. Missing com, though, that's not to do it. So, best idea, go right to the sump and start stripping this thing down because this this will need new oil. The two timing belts, uh, what else do we need, Ronnie? Water pump, pump uh, you name it, man jack. So, at least this is the focus, a bit more room. So, here we go, I'll give you the salient point. We made a start, you can see we've just stripped out the, the heat shields that go across the top bit of the exhaust in order to take these four bolts out. So that's done. Uh, we just removed the oxygen sensors. There was enough slack in the cables just to pop them out, because it's a way around the back there. So we just want to go and get the sump off, first of all. There's a bolt down the bottom to remove the catalytic converter we have to get off, but first of all, we have to remove the air compressor. Well, we move it to the side. But we're going to leave this to last all this up the top and check what the sump is like, first of all. Because the customer actually had a diagnosis it needs an oil pump, but we'll do that later on before we clear all this down here. So we have stripped down the bottom. You can see today we're using our what's that lift called again, Roddy? It's a uh, is it Euro lift, Auto lift three thousand. It's ideal for this job actually. Anyway, our diagnosis was correct. Sandy was right again, Roddy. Hi, <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> So look, you can see the muckets in there. There's, it's very gunge. So indeed, that needs to come out and we need new belts. Uh, that one looks guy thin right enough. So that's the oil pump belt. And uh, I suppose if we were real desperado, you could just clean this out and put it back together, but we're not gonna do that here. Silicon then, you've got to catch it at a corner and get it out. There is umpteen bolts. There's the bolts there. Big long ones. Let me see. See the big long ones, they go right through the sump. Well, obviously they all go through the, all go through the sump, but I'll show you when we put them back on. And then we've got these little ones, and then we've got these ones here as well. So, but that's the best thing to do, just to check it. So, there we go. Keep stripping. Oh, we had to remove the compressor. So, in fact, we'll need to tie that up out the road. Just keep stripping. We took the whole exhaust off. There we go. Roddy's just used his toothpick. Oh, yeah, beauty. Oh, lovely. Good old Ford. The quicker they go to electric cars, maybe the better. <laughs> okay, let's see your clothes, Roddy. Oh, look at that. Disgusting. Real bad. We'll take the pump off and clean it up. Eh? Well, anyway. uh, paraffin. Look at it. Right. So we're draining the coolant out and we'll put a little hose on the side. You just turn that a quarter turn, wiggle it out a little bit, and then. We put it down our environment as spotless as possible. Is that right, Rudy? Yeah, spotless. <laughs> spotless. Right. Aye. We're applying pressure to the coolant bottle via <laughs> via Roddy's gub. <laughs> yes, we've got the top part off, and we are at TDC because we've got. Peter Kennedy showed us this tip, put a flat bar right across here so that looks good. We've marked up our timing belt with the end of the camshaft uh, carrier and marked our belt as well and I'll show you where the, the one o'clock position 
off the crankshaft is. There you go. We've got, what was that, a six mil drill? Six, uh, five, was it? five mil drill, and you can see in the cramp, the cramp, the crankshaft there, and that's roughly the one o'clock position. So we're timed up, and we need to do that because we've got no timing tools for this thing. So here's some of the parts you need for this job. Uh, the front crankshaft oil seal. There's a part number there. Interestingly enough, Ford was cheaper than our uh, part supplier. Seven pound for that bit. Then you need a new crankshaft bolt. There's a part number there. Bolt hex head. Because this thing has mega torque on it. Then we need a, we've got a rocker cover gasket. Part number there. And then this is the most important bit. This little seal. This goes into the timing belt cover for the, the water pump. I'll show you. So there it's there. This bit here. You must renew that because if that leaks, you're in trouble. Uh, the other thing I was going to show you, many bolts come out of this uh, cover. And remember these two back bolts, that's where the the water, the coolant hose going, goes into. They're all, they're eight mil. I'm sure they, we just left them in there. Then you must clean all the gasket off. So, but remember to renew that. So there's the amount of bolts that come out of this uh, timing belt cover. So we've got one, two, three, Four of these 13 mil long bolts, and then you've got some tens. Now you kind of get them mixed up because they can't go into the eight mil hole. So that's one, two, just two, maybe just two of these ones. So you've got the funny bits. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The longer ones, one, two, three, four, five, the shorter ones, they're eight mils. So they're mostly eight mils, then ten, then a few thirteens. We just held this up with a little axle stand on the drive shaft bracket because we didn't need to go in there to put the timing tool in. There's, there's the timing, well that's the belt off with the tensioner. That's where these coolant hoses go into the back of the timing belt cover. That up there, so you need to remember that. That's the only ones going for the back of the timing belt cover. And we've marked up a crank along with marks on the bell housing because this this one up here, this is just all turns. So we'll clean them up. Yeah, the maintenance surface of that using brake clean so it gets, makes a good contact. So it's another day and we're back at the EcoBoost. So we decided to buy the tools because some bits of this job were uh, turning into be a little bit horrendous. I'm going to explain why. So we got this one off of Amazon and this locks up the cams and it locks up the crank and then that's for the, the crank uh, pulley. Uh, what else is there there? Take it, that's a little retracting bit for the auxiliary drive belt tensioner. So I'll show you what the problem for us was. See when we were putting the big crank pulley bolt back on and we were just using a gun. We couldn't get the crankshaft pulley to stay still. It kept stepping back. So I thought, Roddy, this is horrendous, man. We'd be told just buying the tools here for a 70 pound. And at least it'll be, well, be absolutely sure that uh, We've got a good tightness on this bolt and we're correctly timed. So, I'm going to show you if you So we removed the oil, I think this is the oil solenoid, and you can see that our mesh is clean. So that's held in with a T30 a Torx, I'll show you that. T30 Torx, and that goes just right up there, right next to the timing pin. So you've got the oil filter come down, so the timing pin goes in there, and the oil solenoid goes in there. So that's the timing pin and the oil control solenoid next to it. You can see Roddy screwing that in there. So the next thing we do is just put the, that onto the, the crank does not turn anymore. That's it. Oh, and that's your TDC. So up the top there, you can see that we've put the flywheel uh, locking plate in. <coughs> and that just holds the whole thing together. And once I've done that, I then take out my little pin for there because you want all the pressure to be on this plate. Oops. 
into the flywheel. So there it's right there. Held in by two bolts plus the middle sections. It must be in one of the teeth. So we, here we have the locking mechanism set at the top. So what we had to do is take the bolt out the turbo and move that pipe along a little bit. Then we put in the four bolts there to hold it to the top of the camshaft, a carrier. And then you open up this gizmo here, that creates space, and you can see that we're slightly off there. So we're going to loosen the bottom bolt again, and that'll draw that whole thing back. Oops. Because there's nowhere this can go because that's a flat edge right against it there. So your cam should come back just a little. Then you go to the, you do all the adjustments through this bit here. Then you tighten that bolt up. But once the bottom, once the bottom uh, crank bolt is loose. So we had to go and buy this washer. Seemingly if you're doing this job, uh, if you disturb the crank bolt, you need this washer. So it goes in between the crankshaft pulley and the crankshaft. So we got that. And we went and got another bolt because we've mucked about with this much. So here goes. Put it all back together. We've got our unit set up here, which I actually think you don't need, but we'll go into that story again. And <clears throat> this is all timed up here. You can see our, everything's in. So we're going to put it back together, and fingers crossed. So here is this friction, the washer they call it. The thinnest thing you have ever seen. That's more like a shim. So anyway, that goes in. That goes in first. I'll show you. So that's me put the shim in there. You can see that in, and then I'm going to put my crankshaft pulley bolt on. Well, that's a glorious noise. It's all back together. Oh, we've got that piping. Oh, there we go. Just started the car. A few covers to put back on. I think we're delighted with that. Uh, let's check, see if the check engine light's on. We're all good. So once again, Dave Sterrell was correct. It doesn't give two stuffs where these VVTs go. As long as the, ca the cams are uh, lined back up. So we'll call that one a fix. So sitting at idle here, you can see our actual exhaust and our, our actual intake. So there's movement in them, but it's, the most important one is this. Camshaft position sensor bank one, exhaust status, no error. Uh, and that other one says, no error as well. So we're all good. I'll give it, well good lad. So Roddy the man, I get a little rev. You can see they're moving. A wee blip Roddy? All right, both moving, so that's good. So we took it a little run, and it came up with a P0299 turbocharger under boost. I already popped back under the, uh, the hood, and we found a hose was off, so we've just given it another run. But saying, I've just drawn up some turbocharger pids. It's saying open circuit, bypass, I don't know what they mean, but they seem to be, hey, it's quite peaky. We'll keep running it because it came up with an engine warning light up there. So, or engine service, service soon. Service oh. soon. Now? I see we're getting up to 3, 83 percent. Before we're getting actually any pressure, it must be like that's going in it. Ah, that's got turbochargers. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have nothing there. Right, let's keep running. Right, I found the pid for boost. So you can see that's a two pid there, a hundred, and then another uh, measured boost at throttle intake. So we are getting up there. I'll just show you as we go along the road here. Ah, plenty boost. Ah, that's fine, Roddy. That light's not going to come back on. There's a good graph, I just combined them. So you have the raw input and the, what it's looking for, so that light's not going to come back on. Uh, 
There we go. Plenty of power. 